up everybody hey how's everybody doing today welcome to the channel um, today's video is going to be on a tactic that you can try out this fall whenever things get slow for you so let's get right in today's video got one thing smoke so um, a lot of people call this time the October lull um, today's Halloween so we can't really call it October lull after tomorrow so after today anyway but uh, I believe there's no such thing as the October lull the deer are still moving the deer are still on their feet they're just closer to the bedding area um, the reason for the October lull is because of the influx of hunters in the woods, the scent that we're leaving behind, the tractors, the disking, uh, the people putting out uh, feed for deer, checking cameras in and out of the woods, and deer just get spooky. Um, and they stay closer to home. They don't venture far away from the bedding areas. So a tactic you can try especially in late October, mid to late October, is getting tight to those bedding areas. Well, getting tight to the bedding areas anyway is going to be better. But um, try light rattling next to a known bedding area. Now, I have a small, tiny, known bedding area right out in front of me. Um, it's not very big. Um, I only saw three deer this morning, which is okay for this area but I rattled in one of those deer. Um, and I, I want to talk about a few key points whenever you're doing this rattling, um, really anytime. So um, this bedding area is pretty small and um, I'm within shooting distance of the actual bedding area where it begins. Um, now it just all depends where in this little bedding area they want to bed, but um, my, my method today was try to pull them out of this bedding area with doing some light sparring and um, it paid off. I was able to rattle one up. It just as easily could have been a mature deer. Like I said before, um, anytime you get a deer within bow range, no matter what it is, you, you beat that whitetail. Um, getting a deer in bow range is a huge accomplishment. Think about it. Um, you slipped in here. The deer ain't smelled you. The deer ain't seen you. And you got it within bow range. So it's a huge accomplishment no matter what type of deer it is. So one thing I want to talk about is when you're sparring or rattling, keep in mind, less is can be better. Especially where I hunt. Um, the calling style that you use is relative to where you hunt. So um, if I come in here beating and banging horns and um, making all kinds of racket like a 150, 160 inch deer would do. I'm going to scare off more deer than anything here where I hunt. Right here where I am today in Louisiana, North Louisiana. There probably ain't 160 inch deer within 50 miles of here. So keep in mind of where you're hunting and the calling style that you're trying to produce. Now if I was in Kansas and Missouri or Illinois and Iowa or somewhere in the Midwest where a lot more of those bigger deer existed yes i can get away with rattling and calling uh, aggressively more aggressively but even light sparring is going to uh, pique their curiosity come check it out um another tip i got for you it's always be ready as you can see whenever you're about to watch this video here shortly that that deer came trotting in here while I was in the middle of the rattling sequence. He came out of the bedding area. 
Um, and I barely had time to swing the camera around and, and get on him before I would have had to take a shot if it was a shooter. All I knew was it was a buck, and I grabbed my bow and, and pointed my camera where I thought he was going to go. But uh, it looks like I got some good footage of it. Um, always have a game plan inside your head, what you're going to do with your, well, whatever you're using to rattle with. In case he does come running in, you, you're not fumbling trying to find a place to put it. Have a place set out, set up, ready to go, just to hang those things back up, whether you're using rattle bag or that little deal I was using this morning or, or real antlers or whatever. Just have a, an idea of what you're going to do with them if one comes in right now. Um, do your rattling and grunting sequences at peak movement times, and I've been guilty of this a lot, um, is only using calling as a last resort. If deer are already on their feet at 7, 15, 30, 40 minutes after daylight, they're starting to, they could already be in bed, they could be on their way to bed, but they're still active. And um, a lot of times we use calling as a last resort. Do it while he's already on his feet instead of trying to get him up on his feet and get him moving. That's the same as in the evening. Do it 40 minutes, 30 minutes before dark. You know, while he's out and about, you know, he might be out there 150 yards. You just can't see him. Peak his curiosity to try to come check you out. And um, that's about all the tips I have for right now. So let's just get into the, that today's video of this uh, this little buck coming in. Um, there's lots of people that would have shot that deer around here. Um, rifle season started uh, two days ago, so um, I'm still bow hunting.
All right, so there you have it. Hey, I hope y'all learned something today. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, the like button, the notification bell. And uh, good luck this season. Y'all get after them. It's about to go down. And hopefully I'll get my I'll get to wrap my hands around a buck soon. So I've had a hard time. But uh, thanks for watching. Y'all have a good day. Thank <laughs> you.